Yo, Internet. I would like to show you how you can create custom collisions for any obstacle or object for Session or any other Unreal Engine project. So um, let's go. Generally, it doesn't matter how visually complex your objects are. It can be photogrammetry, it can be simple cubical objects or super complex objects. Um, as long as you um, create the proper um, collider boxes, uh, you're good to go. Okay, the first thing you need to know to create um, colliders that get properly recognized by Unreal Engine or any other game engine, you need to have um, box colliders, non-overlapping box colliders. So let's start easy. With this super simple curve, it's basically just two cubes. So your colliders would also um, be just like one big uh, cube on the top and one smaller cube on the bottom. Um, I could also go into Unreal Engine and change the collider settings from simple to complex as simple and then it uses the whole geometry as a collision object. The only thing is, if you have, like I do in this uh, model, if you have bevel edges and not like straight polygon edges, like if you have like a beveled one, like a round one, uh, the collision detection doesn't work properly in session. I don't know for other video games, probably uh, the same. So we need to create um, the colliders. But don't worry, it's super simple. As I said with this one, just create a, a cube for the upper part of the curb and then a second uh, cube for the lower part and try to um, frame the mesh perfectly or as good as uh, possible. I don't know about any other software, but it's probably the same. You can activate snapping and activate polygon snapping and then when you move the upper face of the lower box, it snaps automatically um, to the polygon of the upper box. So you want non-overlapping um, collider boxes. So non-overlapping boxes pretend you from running into glitches uh, during the game or during the creation process of your map or whatever. So make sure to have them perfectly aligned by auto-snapping. So in this case now we have three objects. Um, the main mesh of the textures and the two colliders. And what you want to do now is um, make the two colliders childs of the main mesh. And um, now it's really important to give them the proper naming because the naming is what um, lets Unreal Engine recognize the collider boxes and doesn't show them in the video game or in the whatever uh, engine. So you want to name them UCX underscore and then the name of the objects underscore 001 and 002 and then you count up if you have like more than two collider boxes for an object so you can go all the way to like 999 right so hopefully you don't need to do that but it would be possible so this is the way you create the collider boxes in your 3d software um, actually it doesn't matter to say if it's cinema 4d blender maya whatever you can create them wherever you want of course um, just take care of the naming and what I do is um, on top of that I um, make them invisible in Cinema 4D so I can just see my mesh and then I have the collider boxes. Then all you need to do is export as an FBX, import into Unreal Engine and when you select show colliders or uh, show collision you can see the outline of the colliders is working and the mesh is not showing up. So the main mesh is showing up, but not the collider meshes are showing up. So it's actually properly uh, recognizing the collision boxes. Um, if you go to unhide, you can see it a little bit better here uh, that the boxes are properly um, aligned and working. Let's give it a quick test in the game. Um, don't worry about the character, it's work in progress. Um, but yeah, you can see the collider system works properly. The board rolls under the curb and then it's also on top. You can see it's uh, sliding and it's also grinding. Why have you seen this tail slide? Let's watch it again. Bam. Not locked in perfectly, but it looks so cool. Okay. So collision is working. Next one. I'm coming back to the thing I said in the beginning that you can use whatever visual complexity I want to show you, uh, I did a project, a small project um, with a photogrammetry 
Uh, I scanned my desk and um, built a level out of it. I just scanned my desk and put some simple um, box collisions under the mesh. One for the interface, one for the desk itself, then one for the um, trackpad and one for the keyboard. And um, you can see the iMac, it has a like more complex um, collider. This is what the complex as simple collision in Unreal Engine does. Um, I wouldn't use this collision for um, skatable objects or at least not grindable objects. Um, you can use them for like bumpers, waves, um, or bumps on the ground, definitely. Um, as long as your objects are not too polygon heavy. Um, cause it can make your, if you have a lot of this in your scene, it can make your game running, run a little bit slower. Um, here I used it for the collision of the iMac, as I said. I could easily just implement um, a box around the iMac. But to be honest, I just forgot it in Cinema 4D and I was in Unreal Engine already. The scene is super small, so I thought I, I just use the complex as simple collider. And also sometimes I use it for like walls or pillars or something where you don't need to interact like properly, I would say, um, if you know what I mean. As long as the main purpose is to skate it like a curb or a rail or something, I would definitely um, build my custom collisions for it. Um, speaking of rails, honestly, this took me a while to figure out. Um, if you have a rail and you wanna put the proper box collision outside, I was thinking it takes way too much time to like align all the polygons and stuff. But then after like trying different stuff, um, I found this solution. So how I built my rails in Cinema 4D, not only for using them as colliders, but also for visualization, animation and stuff, is um, with splines. So create a spline in whatever shape you want your rail to be. It can be a handrail, it can be a curved rail, it can be like a wavy zigzag, whatever rail. Um, just create your spline, put it in a sweep and let a circle follow your spline and you got your rail. And from there, it's a good starting point to create your colliders for your rail because you can just duplicate your rail, um, delete the, the circle which is following the spline and um, replace it with a rectangle following your spline. So you can see when you lower the steps of your um, spline, you have collider boxes following your rail. So what you have to do now looks like it, it takes a lot of time, but trust me, it just takes a couple of minutes. Convert your sweep into an object. And now you have one object with a lot of boxes following the path of the rail. Now you have to count how many boxes this are. In my case, it's 20. So I have to duplicate the object like 20 times, like 19 times. So to have a total of 20. This maybe sounds complicated, but Go to the first object, start from the left, um, do a loop selection, invert the selection, delete all the others. And then you go through all of them, like take the second object, the second from left, do loop selection, invert, delete everything. So at the end, you have 20 boxes separated from each another. Um, I don't know if there's an easier way to do it, but um, I didn't found one, so for me it worked. The only thing you have to do now is close the holes of um, each object. It's like on both sides you have to close it and then you're done. You have your 20 colliders following the path of the rail. For the bottom part you could do the same, but I would use way less um, boxes because this is not supposed to be grindable. It's just a collider for when you, when you crash the rail or whatever. So um, it doesn't need to be as accurate. So I would use um, less polygons to save a little bit of time. You can see um, it's not as accurate, but it's good enough for like a simple collision. And then again, you have to export your FBX, uh, import it to Unreal Engine. And then there's one thing I forgot to mention. When you import your FBX into Unreal Engine, there's a pop-up dialog box and you have to deselect the um, generate missing collision uh, it can cause troubles, but you should be good if you follow the tutorial and have the proper naming convention. But just in case, just turn it off and import everything. Now when you drag it into your scene and you go to show collisions, again, you can see that everything worked properly. You have all your small box colliders following your rail 
In the bottom you have the little bit rougher collision boxes, which are completely fine. And also here, let's uh, dive into the game and check the collisions. How oh, wavy it is. So cool. Let's watch it again. Whoa. Cool. So yeah, I think we are fine with the collisions. And if you have any questions, feel free to write them down in the comments. And I try to help as good as I can. I hope this video helped you. And um, yeah, if you want to see more of this content, subscribe my channel. See you next time, Internet.